the Maclaurin series for a function f is given by, and they give it in sigma notation, and then they expand it out for us, and converges to f of x for the absolute value of x being less than r, where r is the radius of convergence of the Maclaurin series. Part a, use the ratio test to find r. So first of all, if terms like Maclaurin series and radius of convergence or even convergence or ratio test seem foreign to you or you have some foggy memories of it, you might want to review all of those concepts on Khan Academy. We actually have multiple videos and exercises on each of these concepts on Khan Academy. But if you kind of know what it is, I will give you a little bit of a reminder for the ratio test. So the ratio test tells us if we have, if we have an infinite series, so we go from n equals 1 to infinity, and each term is a sub n. The ratio test, ratio test says, all right, well, let's consider the ratio between successive terms. So we could say the ratio of a sub n plus 1 over a sub n. And in particular, we want to focus on the absolute value of this ratio. And this by itself, it might not be a constant like we would see in a geometric series. It actually might be a function of n itself. And so we want to see the behavior of this ratio as n gets really, really, really large, as we're kind of you know, adding those terms as we're getting close to infinity. So we'd want to take the limit as n approaches infinity here. And if this limit exists, let's say it's l, and if l, if l is less than 1, then the series the series converges, converges. So what we're going to want to do, and if L is greater than 1, it diverges, it's equal to 1, it's, it's inconclusive. And so what we want to do here is we want to figure out the absolute value of the ratio here, take the limit, and then see for what x values does that limit, will that limit be less than 1. So let's do that. So let's first think about this ratio. So a sub n plus 1 over a sub n is going to be equal to, so if we put n plus 1 into this expression here, we're going to have, so let me make this clear, so I'm going to do a sub n plus 1 up here, so we're going to have negative 3, and I could write to the n plus 1 instead of an n, and then minus 1, so it would be n plus 1 minus 1, well plus 1 minus 1 is just 0, so that's just the same thing as negative 3 to the n times x to the n plus 1, x to the n plus 1 over n plus 1, n plus 1. So that's a sub n plus 1 there. And a sub n, well, that's just negative 3 to the n minus 1 times x to the n over n. So what does this right over here simplify to? This is going to be equal to, well, we could just say this divided by that is the same thing as multiplying by the reciprocal of all of this stuff down here. So it's negative negative 3 to the n x to the n plus 1 over n plus 1 times the reciprocal of this business. So times n over over negative 3 to the n minus 1 x to the n. And so can we simplify this? Well, we can divide both the numerator and the denominator here by x to the n. So this divided by x to the n is just 1. This divided by x to the n is going to be x, or x to the first power. And we can divide the numerator and the denominator by negative 3 to the n minus 1. Well, this is just going to be 1. And if you divide negative 3 to the n by negative 3 to the n minus 1, well, that's just going to be negative 3 to the first power. So this is all going to be negative 3x n over over n over n plus 1. So now let's think about what the limit of the, of the absolute value of this as n approaches infinity is. So the limit, the limit as n approaches infinity of the absolute value of negative 3xn over n plus 1. Now some of you might recognize if we focus on n, we have the same degree up here, same degree down here, this both n to the first. So these are going to, the n over n plus 1 is going to approach 1. And so you might say, okay, well this is going to be the absolute value of negative 3x. But if you want to make that a little bit clearer, this is equal to the limit as n approaches infinity of, and I'll write it this way. Let me, let me write it. So I could write the absolute value of negative 3x or the absolute value of negative 3x is the same thing as 3 
times the absolute value of x times the absolute value of, if I divide the numerator here by n, I would get one, and if I divide the denominator by n, I can do, as long as, if I multiply or divide the denominator by this, the numerator and the denominator by the same thing, I'm not changing it value. So if I do, if I divide both of them by n, in the numerator I just get one, in the denominator, n divided by n is one, one divided by n is plus one over n. And so this might be a little bit clearer that, okay, as n approaches infinity, well, we don't know, this doesn't deal with n, but this over here, one over n is going to approach zero, and so this whole thing is going to approach one, and so the limit is going to be three times the absolute value of x. And so remember, this series converges is if this limit, if this limit is less than one. So converges, 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 if three times the absolute value of x is less than one. Or, we could say the absolute value of x, just divide both sides by three, is less than one third. And so we have just found our radius of convergence, r. So we could say r is equal to one third. This Maclaurin series is going to converge as long as the absolute value of x is less than one third. Or we could say our radius of convergence is equal to our radius of convergence is equal to one third. So there you go.